Do you want to know some of the most common interview questions for cybersecurity? How about some questions that are meant to trip you up? Well, stick around for this video and I will break down 10 questions and answers to help you ace your cybersecurity interview. But first, if this is the first time that we are meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, head on over to my website at johngood.com to access full training courses. If you just want to donate to support the channel, that's cool too. Visit the link in the description to donate. You can also join me on Discord. The link is in the description. Okay, let's get into the video. Number one, how is encryption different from hashing? This question is really to figure out if you understand both encryption and hashing. First of all, the main idea of encryption is to protect the confidentiality of data. We are using some type of algorithm in order to scramble the data so that only the person with that decryption key can read or make sense of the data. We use encryption for many things, but email, web traffic, and data storage are three of the most common uses for encryption. Hashing, on the other hand, is a mechanism to verify the integrity of data. When we create a hash of data, such as a file, we generate some random string of characters that will be the same as long as that file does not change. If any part of that file changes and we create the hash again, we are going to have a completely different value returned. For this type of question, it's going to be a good idea that you know a few different types of encryption and hashing algorithms. Question number two, describe your home network or lab. This question is where you should geek out. Your answers really describe how invested into the field you are. As things are changing more to the cloud, you might not have stacks of equipment at your house anymore, but being able to describe some of the technologies that you use in your home helps a lot, especially if you have less experience. Security people wanna know, what are you tinkering with outside of work? What kinds of things? And make sure that you're not just checking out when you leave work for the day. Remember that to be successful in security, you have to keep learning. Question number three, what is the OSI model? The OSI model is one of those things you learn very early in your career. I've heard this question asked with varying difficulty from what is the OSI model? What are the layers of the OSI model? Or even having somebody describe each layer. The OSI model has all kinds of uses but at its simplest form, the OSI model provides a standardized method for computing and network communications. We also use the OSI model in order to help us troubleshoot technology. For example, you might hear somebody say, well, I have a layer one issue because a cable has gone bad, or I have a layer three issue, meaning that there's an issue with routing or network gear. Question number four, which is more secure, open source or closed source? I want you to be careful with this question. I know that a lot of people are going to jump to saying that closed source software is more secure, but if the question was so easy, why would they ask it in an interview? First of all, open source software in companies is very common in today's environments. If you quickly disregard open source software, you might actually cause a lot of issues with developers in your company. And honestly, you are being very closed minded. For this kind of question, I would be more conversational about it because both open source and closed source software have benefits to them. Think about if you were in a heavy DevOps type environment that needed a lot of customization for different aspects of the business. Closed source software might severely limit your progress. The key point is to think things through with this type of question. Question five, which security framework is best. Depending on the role that you're interviewing for or that you're trying to get, this question definitely will be asked. Security programs follow some type of security framework in order to hit key security requirements. Some industries have very specific requirements, such as the defense and government sectors. So they might take some other type of regulations 
and tailor them to their environments. And then you have technology companies that might not have anything that they actually have to follow. Some of the most common frameworks include the NIST Special Publication 800 series, COBIT, and PCI. The more of these that you can get exposure to, the better. But typically, your exposure is going to be based on the industries that you've worked in. Now, I hope you're enjoying the content so far. Make sure to smash the like and leave a comment to let me know if you have been asked any of these questions in any interview that you've been in. All right, back to the content. Question six, what is the primary goal of information security or cybersecurity? Your answer to this question speaks directly to your mindset of our role as cybersecurity or information security in the organization. At the heart of what we do is the idea of helping the business be successful. We aren't there to create a surplus of roadblocks. And in most cases, we're considered a cost center because we aren't creating profit for the company. If the company decides to pursue a certain path, we need to look for ways to enable the business in order to get there. When you answer this question, if you respond in a way that doesn't contribute to the success of the organization, you are likely going to be seen in a negative light because you don't understand our true purpose. Question number seven, what is risk? What is a threat? What is a vulnerability? Today in security, we need to be extremely focused on risk and balancing the controls that we put in place with the potential loss or damage the business might incur. A true test of a seasoned security professional is going to be how much they consider the business and the likelihood that a risk is going to be realized or that it's going to happen. Inexperienced people or inexperienced professionals are set on the idea of implementing security just for the sake of implementing security instead of realizing that everything has a cost and some security is just not worth it for the business. Of course, much of what we implement for security relies on business leaders and senior management support. But if you mention something about balancing risk and the business, then you're going to be seen as a more experienced professional than somebody who does not mention that. Question number eight, where do you get your security news from? In this career field of cybersecurity and information security, if you aren't learning, then you're moving backwards. Things change, new technologies are released, new vulnerabilities are discovered all the time. You must be learning every day. If you don't already read security news, you need to start. Get yourself an RSS reader. I use something called Feedly in order to get all of my news in one spot. And start researching security websites. A website called Dark Reading. Also, Krebs on Security are two really good places for security news. But also check out Security Weekly, which actually has a YouTube channel, and they cover weekly news in a podcast-style format. Question number nine, why are preventative controls better than detective controls? Or why are detective controls better than preventative controls? I've actually never been personally asked this question in an interview, but I actually think it's an interesting question for somebody to ask. If you're interviewing with somebody who's fairly skilled at conducting interviews, well, you should expect some type of curveball questions from them. The reason why I like this question is because first, you actually have to know the difference between the two types of controls, which is pretty simple in general. But second, it's kind of a trick question because the best choice actually depends on a lot of different factors. If I was to ask somebody this question, I wanna hear your thoughts as you think things out. For example, technical preventative controls are always in line, such as an intrusion prevention system or IPS. So you can actually run into capacity issues for handling traffic, and you might even have a single point of failure on your hands. Detective controls allow you to analyze what's happening without letting an attacker know that you're watching them. The ability to break down a question like this and evaluate the pros and the cons is a quality that an experienced professional should have. And then when you compare that to a beginner, the beginner is probably going to jump to a conclusion saying that one type of control is always better than the other. Question number 10, should you compress or should you encrypt first? Similar to other questions that we've gone through, this question is really to identify your technical level. 
The true answer, of course, is that you should compress data first and then encrypt it. But this simple question is likely to trip up beginners. Question of the day. What is the hardest question that you've been asked in an interview? Did you know the answer? How did you respond to the question if you didn't know the answer? Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Head on over to my website at johngood.com for full training courses, and I'll see you next time.